putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I got to tell you, I love this next story. I love this story for so many reasons. It's Kevin Jackson Show, folks. My name's Kevin Jackson. This is a great story. This is a story that is going to torment the left until the second, the end of the second Trump presidency. This is a story that destroys the narrative and it points the finger back at the other side. And you're going, Kevin, what do you do? Tell black man, tell us black man. Don't just hold it out for yourself, Kev. Barack Obama said, no, Kev, Kevin, you, you, you don't need to be t- talking about th- this story because this story does not make me look good. I know, Barack. That's why I want to tell it. <laughs> Trump's like, Kev, Kev, t- tell, tell the story. It's a good, it's a good, it's a, it's not a good, it's a great story. The story's huge. The story talks about my prowess. <laughs> it's not a very good Trump, but I'll work on it. <laughs> this is an amazing story. Because I want to set the backdrop. I want to remind you of the story of a Marine named Tomaresi, Sergeant Tomaresi who made a ill-fated wrong turn on the border of Mexico. And he ended up in the Mexico. And when he got there and going into the country of Mexico, when he got there, he declared, I made a wrong turn. I didn't just cross back over the border because I would have done it. I would have turned around in traffic and gone back the other direction that I'd gotten screwed up in Mexico. But he not only did that, he said, hey, by the way, I've got a firearm that I can own. I can own legally in the United States. (gasps) You have a firearm. Oh, my friend, you're in big trouble. Oh, my goodness, we, we must detain you now. I don't know what to tell you. You're in big trouble, my friend. You, you know, I, I boy, whoo, we got a big problem here. Hi, hi, mamacita, yikes. So they arrested Tamaresi, a country with whom we have a $56 billion trade deficit, who have 11 billion at banditos over in our country, give or take. And we've got a Marine who's now been put into captivity in Mexico, and he stayed there over a year before he was finally released. And you know who got him released? Donald Trump. Hey, in case you didn't realize it, we had this scenario happen again. A guy by the name of Otto Warmbier, who got caught in while while on a, a trip with friends, you know, like part of a college tour or something. He takes down a picture of Kim Jong Un and lands him in prison in North Korea. And even after they parade him in front of the media I'm really sorry I didn't mean to do it and he's a cry he's crying I'm sorry I'm so sorry they put him in jail beat the crap out of him and you know who it took to get him home Donald Trump Barack Obama left two people languishing in jails in foreign countries He didn't even get the political prisoners out of Iran after he gave them a boatload of money. Well, actually, he did. They came later. He claimed it wasn't because of that. But they suddenly released a few of them, not all. And now we have another situation. I love this one. The story is this. China Sports Insider writes this. LiAngelo Ball... Cody Riley and Jalen Hill play for UCLA ballers, all of them black. And they got detained while in Hanzhou, China. And they, uh, they were detained because they were shoplifting. And so Donald Trump, who happened to be touring Asia said, Hey, by the way, you know, Xi." We got some issues. We're going to be working out this trade thing. But while we're on the subject, you got three black players for the University of California, Los Angeles, who did some wrong crap in your country, man. I need you to send those boys home. And you know what China did? They released them. Yep. They got detained. They got, you know, fingerprinted, whatever they do for you in China. I lived there, but I never got arrested. (laughs) Knock on wood. (laughs) Anyway, um, (laughs) <laughs> they got detained, they got arrested, yada, yada. But they didn't get beat down. 
They didn't stay in China for a year, come back over only to die on American soil. They didn't get neglected by the president. The State Department didn't make all kinds of promises and say, let's keep it hush hush or whatever. Donald Trump went there, met with all the Asians during his Asian visit and said, hey, send those boys home. Now, here's what I want you to understand about the story. Got to crack my knuckles. That was me. That wasn't my knuckles. (laughs) The story is this. Barack Obama left a white dude in Mexico. Barack Obama left a white dude in North Korea. And Donald Trump brought home three black dudes who did stuff wrong. He brought them back. He's like, hey, I know you did something wrong. We can deal with them in America. Tamarissi did nothing wrong. Warm BA, for the most part, did a prank. Tried to take, you know, you know it would be the equivalent of taking down some of that crazy, some rinky dink artwork in a hotel at the, the Days Inn. You know, dogs playing poker on velvet. Pay the fine, let the guy go. Dude lost his life over it. Two white guys. Our foreign policy so weak that Barack Obama couldn't bring him home. And racist that he is, Donald Trump says to China, you have three American citizens that did something wrong, need to be made to pay for it, whatever. Send them home. We'll take care of it on American soil. And what happened? They got sent home. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. What do you think would happen if Barack Obama were president and these three black kids got caught shoplifting in China, in Gangzhou, China, and Obama was the president? Let me tell you, if there's any black people in America who better be doggone skippy happy that Donald Trump is the president, It's those three kids. Yeah. Unbelievable. Here's what they said happened. Leangelo's dad, uh, LeVar, and younger brother LaMelo were today hosting a pop-up shop for the family's big baller brand in Hong Kong, which is due to finish at 9 a.m. China time. The exact time the teen's flight was scheduled to depart from Shanghai. It's possible that the family is just now receiving news of the release, given the tight turnaround of events. So they were still going forward with things in Japan, the father and the younger son. As the other son was in incarcerated at this point. And while that was going on, their president made that happen. Now, let's think about the ramifications of this, because I'm curious to see what the NAACP is going to say about President Trump not leaving three young black men to languish in a Chinese prison over, let's just be honest, a a nothing. I'm not dismissing what they did necessarily. It's a crime. But I'm saying it wasn't like they were building nuclear bombs. They did something stupid. And any more than if three Chinese youths were caught shoplifting in America... And we'd say, hey, send them home. Let let China deal with it. Can't come back. I don't know what the punishment should be. But here's what I do know. What Otto Warmbier did in North Korea did not, was not a good reason for him to lose his life. What Tamarisi did in, in Mexico was not a reason to have one year of his life go by for something that Barack Obama should have been able to get him out of that prison within a day or two max. And I said this on my show year when it happened, I said, if Kevin Jackson were president, the Mexicans wouldn't be able to release Tamarisi fast enough. If Kevin Jackson were president, the North Koreans wouldn't even consider that a crime. They would say to Otto Warmbier, You've done something very stupid here, but you go home. You tell other kids, you come here, you in trouble, but we let you go because Kevin Jackson president. You're doggone right they would. They would 
There is no American that you don't misunderstand me. You go over and do something stupid. You're going to come back over and face the crime as if you've done it there. But no country is going to do that, especially something is is blatantly. There was no, no big deal in what these two people did. And I just want you to understand the difference between Trump and Obama. Let's see how the NAACP handles this. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.